Hi, my name is Trey Bremer. I'm with Mitel. Today I'm going to go over your 6920 IP phone. We're going to talk about its features and the cool tools it provides you, as well as the voicemail. And we'll make sure you're able to set that up after we're done with this video, as well as a couple things you need to know. Here those are. Uh, first thing is you need to dial a 9 for an outside line. Uh, you'll also need to dial the area code and phone number, even for local calling. But you won't have to dial the 1 anymore for long distance or 800 dialing. But if you do dial the 1, it won't hurt anything, but you don't need to. Your default passcode for your voicemail will be 1111. And one thing I didn't list on here, but I want to tell you, is if you had to dial 911, you can just dial 911 without dialing the 9 first. But if you do dial the 9, that will work too. So 9911 or 911 will work. One last thing I want to tell you about 911 is if you accidentally dial it, sometimes if you aren't used to dialing a 9, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, uh, sometimes people are dialing uh, 911 on accident. If you do, stay on the line and let them know you accidentally dialed it because if you hang up, sometimes depending on the area, they'll still dispatch someone out. So uh, you want to avoid that if you can. Here's what the uh, 6920 IP phone looks like. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the top where you see the little Mitel uh, logo and we're gonna work our way down, make sure uh, you understand what that screen's all about. There's buttons on, on one side of it as well as buttons underneath and then there's a little round circle on there. So we're gonna go through each of those pieces of functionality and make sure you know what everything is on there. And then we're going to talk about the buttons on either side of the keypad and then we're gonna go through voicemail. So let's go ahead and take a look. First thing I want to show you is this navigation tool. It's a little silver uh, round deal that's on your phone. Uh, here's how that works. You, you can uh, kind of scroll through uh, different settings or different menus, uh, you know, left or right or up or down. And hitting the center of the button will select. And you're going to see where this comes into play quite a bit when you're looking at things like call history or if you're trying to uh, look through your contacts uh, or if you're going through the features of the phone, you want to change your ringtone or something like that, uh, you'll be using this little circular guy. Uh, here's what the display will look like. Uh, remembering that on the uh, if you're looking at the display right now, the left-hand side is going to be buttons on that side, and then you have buttons underneath, which I'm representing, uh, that will control these. It's not touch screen, but uh, the buttons are associated to it. So uh, starting at the very, very top in the blue area, you see an extension number. That's going to be your extension number when it's your phone. Uh, that's where you can look to to see what that extension number is. And then what I did over here is I kind of exaggerated what you'll be seeing, but I put up all the little icons that might pop up uh, when you are uh, on a call, just to kind of give you an idea of what everything is. And I'm just going to go through them ever so quickly, but just so you can see, the first little one is a little tape player. That little tape player is uh, means you have voicemail messages. There's also a light indicator on the very top of your phone that's going to blink. So you're going to have a couple different ways of knowing that you have new voicemail messages. The little person there means that you're hot desked into the phone. And hot desk sounds like a cool feature, but what really it means is that you have the ability on these phones to log in as yourself on anyone else's phone in the building or uh, once all the locations are hooked up, you could go to any location and log in as you and it brings all your buttons up and any speed dials you set up. And if someone dials your extension, it rings that phone. So it's just the ability to have a little uh, ability to go into maybe a conference room or something, log into that phone for the day if you're doing a big project or something. Uh, so that's what that'll indicate. When you're logged in, that shows up. When you're not logged in or if, you're lo if the phone isn't logged in at all, it'll say locked. And the extension number up here will have a little pound in it. So you'll, you'll know that it's not logged in. The little circle with a line in it, that's do not disturb. So you have a D and D button, which is do not disturb. And if you press that, the little indicator will show up on your display up here, but it also will change the, uh, the key here to show it's in do not disturb. It's an on and off on that. It turns it on and turn it off, no big deal. Uh, here's a little uh, arrow that's ricocheting off a line. That means you have a missed call. You can see this example, they had four missed calls. So if you go to lunch and you come back, you look up there and it says three or four or whatever, that means that someone has called you and you missed it. So that's just an indicator for that. The little arrow that comes in and then bounces off means this phone is forwarded. Uh, you probably won't use the forward too much. When you forward your phone, it forwards it out to either another extension or to an outside destination. And then it doesn't go to your voicemail here locally. It just basically 
uh, forwards off. So the idea of that would be, say you wanted to, uh, you're on vacation or on leave and you want to make sure all your calls are answered, you could forward your phone over to the receptionist and everyone who dials you will go straight there. This little uh, three boxes here in the line just indicates that you're connected to the network. So when it's green, we know you're good. So uh, if it's green, that's what that means. Uh, looking at the other keys, starting under your extension number, it says my phone. My phone is your first line in, your prime line, we call it. That means all your calls are gonna come to that line. They're gonna try to populate that prime line first. So uh, every first call you get will be on that prime line. Uh, it'll blink and it'll show you caller ID when a call comes in. It'll also show you caller ID in this big area over uh, to the right hand side under the time and date. And it usually, if it's internal, it'll show you who the name of the person internally and their extension number. If it's an outside, it's gonna show you the, whatever caller identification is provided, name and number, hopefully, that you can see. The next key down is your second line in. Now these are uh, line keys like I can put it on hold here and you can see it on everybody's phone in the office. It's specific to your phone. So when you place a call on hold on your phone, you're the only one that's going to be able to see it on hold and you'll have to pick it up off of your phone. Uh, but that's where it'll show. The blank keys are programmable keys. To program one, you'll press the button next to the open key and hold it down until it offers you to program the key. It'll offer you a speed call or a feature. One of the features that might be useful to you is much like your car, a modern car would be, you can sync up your cell phone to this phone uh, and it will ring together. Um, so if you have a cell phone, call, you can pick it up on your desk phone, which is kind of nice. Um, the way you'll do that is you'll hold that button down and then you'll pick the uh, cell phone uh, link and it'll put a little icon for your cell phone on there and then that'll ring when you have calls coming in and you can answer them from your desk phone. It's very nice and uh, easy to do. And I'll show you actually as we go along how you can sync up your cell phone to here and you can take advantage of all your contacts on this phone and it ringing the phone at the same time, which is nice. So uh, there's a couple different neat features you can use. So you got a couple keys on the main page here. And when I say the main page, if you look over here down near the bottom, right under where it says redial on that number, there's little dots. The first one is blue. Uh, the next one is uh, not blued in, I guess you'd say. It just means you can use that navigation key I showed you earlier to scroll through multiple pages. Now, these are all the buttons we have for you. So when you hit the next, you'll see that they're blank and you can program someone's speed dial or an outside number or uh, use that feature if you wanted we talked about. So um, those will all be blank like these are. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like. The D&D &D is do not disturb. We talked about that a little earlier. You see all the indication light up top or the little indication logo for the circle with the line in it to let you know you're in do not disturb. So that's an on and off when you hit it it makes all your calls go to voicemail. Now you can still use the call for outbound calling, but no inbound calls will come to your phone. They'll go straight to your voicemail box and then uh, you'll have to answer them from there. So if you're in and out of the office a lot, you can hit that button, head out the door, and then anyone calling you won't have to listen to a bunch of rings. The all page means that it'll page through all the idle phones in the office. So when you hit that, you'll hear a tone and uh, you're go ahead and page, hey, there's a call for somebody or whatever you need to say. And then you hang up the phone to complete the page. So uh, you can either hang up the phone or it, uh, I'll show you here on our next slide that it'll show you end call, which is a kind of a nicer way to end the page. So that way, when you're hanging up the phone, no one hears the little clicks across their phone. Um, down here in the gray area, now that's a dynamic area. So it says state sensitive soft keys. What they mean by that is this will change depending on the conditions of the phone. Right now, we're looking at a display of a phone that is idle. So that phone that is idle uh, only offers you redial because that's the only thing you can do, you know, make a call or redial a call you had made. Um, and it gives you the ability to log out. What log out means is it's what we talked about earlier, that hot desk feature, which allows you to log out of this phone and log yourself into it. So if I went into a conference room and I hit that log out key, I could then push log in, put in my extension number, and then put in my 1111 for my PIN number, and I'll take over this phone. And once I'm done, I log out and I could put the phone back to the old extension if I wanted to or whatever I need to do and then log in back into my desk. So it's a way you can log in and out of the phone. 
Some people will use a feature. I personally have the hot desk feature on my phone, but I never use it because I'm always at the same desk. So it's a nice feature where you could use it if you need it, but if you don't need it, uh, you can just leave it alone and uh, nothing ever changes. Now, you'll notice that when we go to the different slides, this gray area down below will change because I'm gonna show you what it looks like when uh, calls come in and that sort of thing. But the next one I wanna show you is when you hit your navigation key, that cir circular key there, uh, what it looks like. It'll go, oh, there you go, you're hitting it. It's going to this next page. So you can see right now we're on that first page. Now, if I wanna go to the second page, I'll hit this navigation key over to the far right and then uh, it'll go to my next page, which has a bunch of blanks on here, which I can program to be, again, outside numbers, extension numbers I might want, that sort of thing. And again, while the phone's idle, I always have the ability to redial regardless of what page I'm on. So, But you can see I can't see the inbound lines anymore, so I want to scroll back to the main page when I'm done. So you scroll to the right, and you'll see all the buttons that are available for you to program. So here's an example of a call uh, coming in. So uh, here I get an indicator. This is an internal one. So I'm seeing who's calling me. It has uh, the person's name and the extension number, and it says it's calling. So I see it also show up as a caller identification up top. Uh, so I know, okay, that's a call coming in. I'll hear my phone ring. Uh, once I pick up the call, it'll offer me, you can see the gray area has changed. Number one, it settles into a, the blue with the white phone on the uh, main line, my prime line we talked about. And it shows me the person and the caller identification. If it's internal or outside, it'll show that. And then it offers me these features that are available now. Now, the first one is transfer. Uh, the transfer feature is going to allow me to press the transfer, dial someone's extension, and then either hit the transfer again or hang up the phone by hitting end call or hanging up to transfer that call to that person. So I can do a transfer pretty quickly. Um, the other button here, uh, we'll kind of look at a little closer, but we can add a user, meaning that I could start a conference call. So at this point, I can go ahead and start a conference call. You can do seven people and yourself on a conference call. Uh, so it's you basically reaching out to people uh, yeah, outside people or internal people to create this conference call, or I can always end the call. So if I'm done talking, I can end the call. The end the call thing is mostly for people who use headsets. You're going to be hanging up the handset. That will end the call, but you could hit end the call if you wanted to from here, and then you'll hear dial tone on your handset. So that's what it looks like when it calls in. Here I am. Uh, I press the transfer key at this point. So what it's done is it's put the uh, person on hold. So it indicates to me that it's on hold. It does that automatically when I push transfer. And I have the ability, if I made a mistake, to go back to that person and start over again by pressing this back to hold that you see all the way over in the very bottom uh, right hand side. But uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and pick a new extension. So I'm going to go ahead and dial that extension. So here I am dialing 3812. Uh, and right now, when I connect with that person, I can have a private conversation at this point. So I can say, hey, you know, hold on for this uh, person. I'm about to send them to you. I can say, catch them up. So right now it's just an announced transfer. Now I can complete it by hitting the transfer again or hanging up. Or let's just say I wanted to transfer a call to you. I hit transfer, I dial your extension, and you said, no, I can't take the call. Just tell them to call me back later. I can go over here to back to hold and start over, basically, to talk with the person again. Uh, um, or whatever. Also, I can uh, go uh, call me back. So let's just say I call you uh, either now or I call you uh, when I'm tr trying to do a transfer and you're not there. I can hit call me back and what happens is when you hang up your phone, it starts ringing my phone. So if I wanted to go back to that caller and put them on hold on my phone, I could, and then you would call me back and I can connect us all together that way. So uh, lots of different ways to kind of do this, but uh, that's what that is. So you know, that's your transfer. Okay. So let's kind of talk about the display now. Um, the way this display or the, the uh, keys now. So what I want to do is start over if we're looking at the phone uh, in front of the phone. I want to start at the left hand side at the top and work our way down. So the first little icon looks like a little person up there. That's going to be your contacts key. Uh, your contacts key is going to allow you to access three different types of contacts. The first one is going to be personal. Those are going to be ones you add and you can see down in the gray area now it says dial and it says delete, and it says add new and close. Now using your little navigation key, 
you can scroll over to any of your personal contacts. You can hit the center of the navigation key or you can press dial when you uh, highlight the person you want to dial. Adding a new one means that you would add in the name and add in the phone number. Uh, so you can add personal contacts in. You also have mobile contacts. Those would be ones if you Bluetooth your phone onto this phone. Then you can go ahead and uh, it will bring in all your mobile contacts that you have in your phone, which is kind of nice. And then corporate contacts are going to be everyone with a phone in the company. And that's going to be a search only. You're not going to see a big list. You can go over, put in at least a letter of the last name or a couple of letters. Obviously, the more of the last name you spell, the closer you're going to get. But you can spell out someone's name. And you're just going to use that navigation key to... Uh, to scroll over to the person you want to do. And you can, again, hit the center of the navigation key or hit dial to call them. So there's the personal. And you can see here I'm uh, searching. I press the search uh, when I went to uh, corporate. And it brings up a list here. And I can go ahead and start typing in the last name. It's going to bring up all the matches to that. And then I can use my navigation key to kind of move through those different connections. So if I just put a single uh, letter in there of the person's last name, then I could scroll down until I find the right person. So that's an another way to do it. You also have, there's your mobile contacts. It tells you how many of each you have and your corporate contacts. So pretty easy. Um, the ABC lowercase just means if you're going to be spelling uh, your, like if you're adding a contact, you can go ahead and spell it and, you know, with lower and uppercase letters. So the, the, it'll look the way you want. And then you have a little backspace button if you're typing in the wrong uh, thing. This also does numbers. So if you hit the little arrow, it'll show you numbers. So you can really put in whatever the location is if there's numbers associated to it. Reset just gets rid of what you've typed in already and you can start over again. So that's how that works. Now, um, this is if I keep going to the right. So when I go over to one of my contacts, personal contacts, I can keep pressing the navigation key um, over to the right-hand side, and I'll go to the, all the listing listed phone numbers they have. Most of you will just have the one, but if anyone lists uh, an extra number in the system, then you can see what they are. Or if you add a personal contact, you can add multiple uh, numbers in there and then pick the number you want to dial by using your navigation key. So that's just if you scroll over once to the per contact and then you scroll over one more time, it'll show you this. And you can edit this at this point and add another number in there if you know another number. Or uh, you can also edit it and change the name if the name's not right, that kind of thing. Now, the next key down is your call history. It separates out your call history like this. When you press the key, it brings it up. This is your main display it's showing you. Uh, so I can use, again, my navigation key comes in handy for this. But I can look at all of my calls, all my call history. Now, this is going to be the last 20 calls that I've either missed I've uh, dialed or I received. So it's basically going to show me those. And it pushes out the oldest one, and the top is always the newest one. So this is everything. I can look at them just by missed calls or outgoing calls or received calls. So once I find that, I can scroll over. And when I scroll over, it'll allow me, again, to dial. It'll offer dial. And I can press the center of the key to dial it. So I don't have to like write down a number or anything. Uh, I can just scroll across, hit dial, and away we go. Here's what it looks like when I scroll over to the name. So here's the all. And then there you can see it's dial or delete or close. But you can also see this is also a place I can add a contact. If I add a contact, it adds it to my personal contacts. So if someone calls me and I say, boy, I want to add them in and remember that number, I could add them right in my call history to my personal contacts. So that'll fill in the name and the phone number. So it makes it a little uh, quicker for you. The next uh, key down takes you to your visual voicemail. Uh, you have voicemail that will show up on your display and you can kind of control it from there if you like. Uh, you just press that and the visual voicemail pops up. Uh, and I'll show you, uh, I'll give you instruction. Um, actually, it's gonna be on that sheet, how to enable this. By default, when you press the key, uh, it's going to uh, just go to voicemail and ask for your passcode. I recommend setting up your voicemail first before enabling your visual voicemail if you'd like this functionality. Uh, what this does is it allows you to play each of your messages uh, kind of just by touching the screen and using the navigation uh, tool. Uh, the way it works is it'll show you all your uh, voicemails, your new ones, or anything you've recorded. You guys aren't really doing the recording thing, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so... All you have to do is scroll over. It'll show a little player, and you just hit the center of your um, 
your navigation tool or hit dial and then it'll start playing that message. It does take it a second uh, to load the message in, so uh, you gotta be a little bit patient when you're playing them, just because it's loading it up. Uh, obviously, the shorter it is, the quicker it's gonna play, but there'll be a little delay on that, just so you know. So that's your visual voicemail. I have some instructions, they're gonna look like this. They're on the, the um, quick reference guide I'm sending out. So to enable it, you'll just go through your settings key and, and follow these steps. Uh, pretty easy to uh, set up. Uh, it's already enabled within the system, so you can use this. So if it's a feature you think you would like, uh, you can go ahead and set it up. And if it's a feature you set up and you decide you don't like it for any reason, you can disable it. So whichever way works for you. If it's enabled, when you hit the little voicemail key, it's going to bring you to your visual voicemail. If it's not, it's going to take you right in and ask for your passcode, and, and, and then you go into your voicemail. The next key is your settings key. The settings key is where you're going to be able to change your ringtones. This is where you're gonna be able to sync up your uh, Bluetooth for your uh, cell phone if you'd like. Um, so there's multiple settings in here. So let's look at what we have to offer on there. Here's a couple of them uh, I circled. These are the, the most prominent ones you'll use. A lot of these settings have to do with teleworker. You'll see the word teleworker and uh, uh, diagnosis of the phone. That has to do more with uh, teleworkers. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. Uh, but one of the ones you see here, the one uh, first one I have is going to be call forward. So that's what the call forward looks like. And you remember that little icon from earlier on the phone. And I can go into this uh, using my, um, I'll use my navigation tool again, and I can hit the center or select if I want when it's highlighted, like you see how the uh, uh, configure teleworkers in blue. But I can use my my navigation tool to go to the right or left or whatever to get to uh, my features. So what I do is I go over here to my uh, my uh, the one circled here, which is the little arrows bouncing off, which was it'll tell you that it's forward. And once I go to the forward, all I have to do is uh, put in the phone number like I would dial it from my desk. So nine area code phone number and I could copy it so it does all of the functions, like basically anyone who calls me at any point, it just goes to wherever I forwarded it. But I could do some conditional forwarding, like only when I'm busy on an internal call or an external call, I could forward to that number, or I could go ahead and uh, no answer. Uh, that means it'll ring my phone for three or four times and then go to my cell phone. So if I was uh, someone who's maybe walking a plant or uh, I need to make sure I get to my cell phone, if I got office calls coming in, I could just either have it ring my phone four times and then go off to my cell phone, or I could just do it when I'm busy on the phone. So there's a couple different ways to do it. Another feature we talked about a little earlier is this little icon here. It means Bluetooth. Uh, you may have seen that icon maybe in your if you have a modern car and uh, you uh, sync up your phone to it. So this is how you can do the sync up for ours. Just want to kind of show you just using your uh, navigation tool again. You're going to scroll over You make sure you hit turn on. It'll turn on the Bluetooth functionality. And then you have to make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on on your cell phone. So that way they can see each other and pair. Then it'll say, you know, pairing available devices. It'll bring up your phone, hopefully. You'll see that on there. And then you just scroll over using your navigation key to uh, select the phone or the device you want. And it'll show you a code and the code should match your phone. That way, if multiple people are trying to set up their phones at the same time, you're not accidentally syncing up or pairing someone else's device or phone. So you'll see your phone and you'll be able to make sure the number is correct. And then you just hit pair and it says pairing like this. Then it says that the connection was successful and you'll know it's successful because then that icon we showed, looked at earlier will show up on your phone. So you know that that's, you're good to go. Now, this is where I recommend going to these blank keys, holding the blank key down, the button associated to the blank key anyway, until it offers you feature and then go to where it says cell phone connection, I believe is what it says. And then you'll have a little cell phone icon that shows up here, like a line three, and it'll show your cell phone on there, a Galaxy or whatever you're using, iPhone or whatever it is. And then uh, that'll actually ring that key when you have a cell phone call and you can just answer it like a regular call. It's kind of slick. So uh, that feature is available to you. And it also brings all your contacts in. We looked at earlier for your, uh, your, per your cell phone contacts. So you can look at all your cell phone contacts as well.
The other feature which you will want to do because the ringer on these has that little uh, tone, uh, little tune type thing by default. And if you're not used to that, sometimes I, when I had it set up initially on my phone, I kind of missed calls at first because I just thought it was some background sound or something from someone's radio. But um, you want to go through and maybe pick a tone that makes sense. So when you're scrolling using your navigation tool, this horn, you'll be able to set up your ringtones and you have one for either internal or external calling. So when someone's calling you internally, you can make it ring differently. And then these are the more sing-songy ones up top. And But as you scroll down, you'll get the ones that are marked as classic. And those will be more like what you're used to, little ring generated tones, you know, ring, 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 that kind of thing. So find the one that doesn't annoy you the most for both an internal and an external. And then you save it and uh, it'll save that tone and you'll have that new ringtone. You can't upload your own tunes to it, but you can pick from the few that we have in there. I think there's like 10 or 12 in there. This is your volume key, so that adjusts the volume. Kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, specific to the device you're, you're using. I don't know if that, I said that right, but if you pick up your handset, you can adjust the handset volume. If you press the speaker key, which I'll show you where that is, you can adjust the speaker volume up and down. And then um, when the phone rings, if you need to adjust how loud it is before you pick up the handset, just adjust that ringer and then uh, you'll have that ringtone generator, uh, the ringtone volume the way you want it. So that's what that is. And you can also just adjust it while you're on stuff. So if you're on the handset, someone's talking very quietly, you can adjust it up and down that way. <clears throat> so now let's look at the uh, right hand side. We're going to start at the top there with that red key. Now the red key is your hang up. Uh, it's mostly designed for people who use headsets. So if you're using a headset, it's kind of nice to hit the hang up rather than have to, uh, if you have a little side of your ear button, you don't have to hit that every time, but that's a hang up button. You can hit that if you want, but if you're holding the handset, you're going to hear dial tone once you hang up. So it's just as easy to hang up the phone. The next button down is uh, your redial. Now re you'll remember from earlier, we had a little, while the phone was idle, we had a little redial. Now that redialed the last number I dialed, it just begins redialing it. This redial will take you to a list. And the list will take you right to your outgoing list. So it's basically your call history, the same on the other side. But instead, it starts you off at outgoing and then you can scroll over using your navigation tool over to the person you want to dial. So if it's just the last person you dialed, you can just use that soft key that says redial at the top, you know, on your display. But if it's somebody who called you maybe a call or two ago, you can use this redial to go to the, your list and pick the person you want to redial. Okay. And then uh, your hold key, it's, a two, it's like your pause key would be on a on a, a VCR almost, right? Or a DVD player, it's the two little lines. And when you pre when you put a call on hold, it shows up and it looks like this, it's in yellow. It actually uh, fluctuates in color, so it's kind of blinking at you. And it tells you that the person's on hold and it shows you the uh, you know little icon up here for hold. And all you have to do is press the key next to the held person and you can recover that hold. So I can put someone on hold and go grab a file and come back and then hit the button, I'm back with them. Or I can go, uh, so I can come back to hold. Uh, so I can go ahead and pull them off a hold if I want uh, from there as well. Uh, this is your mute key. Uh, you can't really see it here, but this little teeny area right next to it is a light and it lights up in red when you're muted. So it'll be solidly lit. And it's basically a toggle. You hit it to uh, turn on the mute, hit it again to turn it off. And mute is just you hearing them, but they can't hear you. So if there's loud uh, noise in your office when you're talking to somebody, you can mute it really quick. Or if you need to sneeze or cough or whatever, that's a good place to go. So that's your mute. And then the one below that is your speaker key. The speaker, if you're wearing a headset, you can answer your headset by double tapping that key. But if you're not wearing a headset, then it's when you hit it, you're just on speaker. The nice thing about this is you can't hang up some, on somebody by hitting this key. The only way you can hang up on somebody is by hitting the uh, hang up. So if you're on a handset and you're going between your speaker and your handset, uh, that's all it does is it toggles between the two. So that's your speaker key. Now, you don't have to hit speaker to be on speaker phone on these phones. All you have to do is leave the handset in the cradle and start dialing, you know, dial nine in the area code and phone number. When it starts ringing, you can pick up the handset and it immediately goes to your handset and you can start talking. So uh, you don't necessarily have to hit that button unless you're on a call and you want to put it on speaker. So this is a sheet I'm going to send out to you. The only difference between this sheet and the one I'm going to send you is up 
on the very top under the Mito logo, I'll put the initial passcode of 1111 up there for you so you know what to press to get into uh, the voicemail. Okay, uh, and once you set it up the one time, it takes you through a tutorial, basically. It's going to ask you uh, to, you know, put in your name, put in your greeting, put in a new passcode. So you can't use 111 again. I don't know. I don't believe you can use your uh, your uh, extension number either. So you need to figure out before you sit down and set up your voicemail, what do you want to say in your greeting and what you want your passcode to be? So uh, once you're done with the tutorial on a daily basis, if you don't have your visual voicemail enabled, you'll just press the voicemail key on the phone and then it'll ask you for your passcode and you're in. Uh, otherwise, if you want, if you like, you can just go ahead and use your visual voicemail and then you'll just play your messages from there. So it makes it a little bit easier to navigate through because you can delete things quicker and save things quicker. Um, this little box area, and you'll get this sheet, will also tell you how to do it from another person's phone, how to get to your voicemail, how to do it from an outside uh, outside dialing, like if you call into the main number or if you have a direct dial number. And then the, the uh, over to the right-hand side is just how the voicemail flows, just to give you an indicator. You can play messages here. You can make a message, meaning create a message to send to somebody. Or you can go back into user, user options and change your greeting, change your name, change your passcode at any point, or redo the tutorial. So I put the little cheats for the voicemail underneath it. There's the rewind five seconds by hitting star. You know, people leave you messages. They say, call me back at 35544, and you're like, what? You can hit the star key, and it backs up five seconds and replace that uh, it goes fast forward I don't know why you'd use that and it does pause for 30 second increments if you press one which means that someone walks into your office and they're and you're on your voicemail you can hit the one key and pause so it works well when you're driving as well if you call in and need to listen to your voicemail uh, you can access it that way uh, and you can use these functions on that but the idea of giving you this sheet isn't that it's so mysterious when you go into your voicemail but just so you don't have to listen to a whole message if you don't want to before you discard it or you keep it and you can see that those are indicated over here so anytime you're listening to the voicemail at any point you can you know discard it you can keep it you can give it to another user you can answer it meaning it'll call back the caller id either the extension number or the outside number or you can play it again of course and make a new message which will bring you down to the second list basically and you can put in an extension number and leave someone a message so uh, there's lots of things you can do uh, in the voicemail you can uh, pretty much go in and change your greetings at any point or your passcode. So it's it's a pretty simple menu, but I want to lay it out for you so you could see it. So that's what I have for you on the uh, 6920 IP phone and the voicemail. So uh, good luck uh, with your new setup and uh, please refer to the sheet. I'll also make sure that I send out a full manual on the uh, 6920 phone. So if you are somebody who really wants to do some research and really see what all functionality is in the on the phone, you can do it. But uh, this should get you started and uh, feel free to play with the phones and get them going. If they're already working on your desk, you should be able to even make possibly an outbound call on them. Um, so even if it's prior to the cut, you can kind of get a little practice and maybe conference somebody in, add a user in or uh, Try to transfer it to another person at your desk just so you get a feel for it. And uh, thank you very much for your time.